Welcome to Exploitation Nation USA, where everything's been exploited, including me. So, um, I'm going to put together a little bit of video along with some screen recording and some photos to um, back up some of what I'm saying. Alright, thanks for coming. Hit that like and subscribe for me. I sure would appreciate it. Glad you're here to listen. Give it time, you'll begin to understand. Alright, have a great and blessed day. Hey everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Um, my name is Dee Dee, or you can call me Day Day. <laughs> but um, I wanted to talk about Steve Jobs and why he really wore a black turtleneck. Um, this article talks about how he goes to Japan or China and meets up with this so-called famous Akito Akayo yeah Akayo Morita and how this little story of how people didn't have clothes and how they had to have uniforms and you know and that Steve ended up becoming friends with this guy and um, his ability to convey a signature style and it just says he, he became friends with him and that that little story was the reason why Steve wore a black turtleneck. You know what? NBC Bay Area, I swear to God, you are so grabbing at straws to try to prove that you have the answers and, and you don't. You know, Steve Jobs and I sat at a kitchen table as he's working on the Macintosh. I'm telling him stories about my grandfather robbing the bank and all kinds of things going on at my family's house and how my father was a professor and my adopted mom was a counselor and a drama speech English teacher and Steve and I started talking business and what should he wear and I was like because when I met him and we hung out he was wearing no shoes he was wearing cut off jeans he was in a sloppy t-shirt and in some old beat up car you know and I had this little cute little pink t-shirt skirt on and a little t-shirt pink vest and um <laughs> it's a real funny story how we had a stare down and I walked backwards into 7-Eleven as we didn't stop staring each other down but that's in my book that's not a story I'm going to discuss right now and what I'm going to discuss is in my book too but Steve Jobs and I sat there for hours and hours every day laughing giggling I mean like two kids in a candy shop and finally I was like he was like I don't know what to wear and after a while I was like Steve just fuck it just wear a pair of tennis shoes first I said penny loafers he's like I'm not into those and I was like yeah I know cuz I wore them when I was going to school I wore blue penny loafers with shoes I mean with dimes in them and that's part of my story too because I knew Daryl Abbott and that's the real reason he named his himself Dimebag because it was an allusion to a story that really had taken place but I'm not going to talk about that here either I hope my ADD doesn't throw this video all over the place but as we sat there and discussed things I told him you know my parents had money because they had the gold from the bank that my grandfather had robbed successfully with the bank owner 
and that people don't really know the true story because they beat the crap out of me most of my entire life growing up in their house until they took oh opportunity for me to have money away and controlled me and controlled me to keep me and Steve apart and it was hard for me to just up and leave and go find him I didn't know where he was I didn't know about next I wouldn't have been able to contact him I had no clue where he was um, but I told him when I asked him then what are the most comfortable shoes you wear other than being barefooted because he ran around IBM and all that barefooted at night they said he stunk they didn't like how he was dressing so they would put him on the late night shift where nobody was around <laughs> and he would work there all by himself and he wouldn't shower well Steve never stank around me and he said well tennis shoes and I said well or do you like to wear khakis or do you like to wear jeans you know let's try to figure this shit out so that you could you know be comfortable these were after all the stories I told him about how my grandfather and the bank owner became friends and how my grandfather became the insurance salesman at the bank and how my grandfather and the bank owner robbed the bank from the inside as the story goes and you can Google it. They claim they were locked in the vault. <laughs> well, that's a load of bullshit. The majority of them were, but my grandfather wasn't. My grandfather walked home. And then he came back. As they ran off and chased Bonnie and Clyde's partners. So I'm sure Bonnie and Clyde were probably in cahoots with them. Because they swore up and down they would never rob this bank because they had friends involved. Well, they had their greedy little hands in it. Because the money was at my papa's house. So, as they were busy chasing the bank robbers, and they finally caught them. <coughs> papa came back from what they claim, walked home for lunch. But in the story... How about I was locked in the vault with them? And that's such a bullshit. Because my mother was his daughter. And she knew the true story. And he walked home. With the gold. So. Apparently they had already loaded some up. But he went home with the rest of it. They were finishing loading it up. Wow the screen went dark. Alright. Well let me start all over. And. I'll, I've connected these videos and um, so as we're sitting there talking about what he should wear to look professional and I was trying to tell him about you know my grandfather and the insurance company he had inside the bank and then my uncles you know would in the 70s wear turtlenecks in early 80s as a in-between for being casual and dressed up that was the only thing that my mother considered and that family considered in between being a slob and being all decked out and Steve's like are you serious and I'm like yeah turtlenecks I said I had to wear a white one she would make me wear a white turtleneck all the friggin time when I didn't want to put on their damn velvet, my mother kept me so dressed. I, I couldn't even wear my own clothes. If I even went or tried to buy my own, she would eventually destroy it and throw it away. So I was always having to wear these white turtlenecks. And Steve sat there and stared in space. And I told him I hated white. White was like it, it, one accident while you're eating. It ruins your clothes. Totally just ruins them. And he was like, yeah, that would suck. He came back and he goes, what about black? And I said, hey, you know what? 
if black is the color on stage, just fuck them, Steve. Fuck them. Just use your most comfortable jeans, a turtleneck. If you need to throw a vest on it, throw a vest. Because my mother was in this vest. Just a turtlenecks. That's where it came from. Everybody wants to make this. How could Steve do? He's such a genius. Well, Steve was a brilliant man. He learned about selling things. I taught him about selling things because my uncles sold things. My cousin sold things. My grandfather sold insurance in a small town and they robbed banks <laughs> but you had to be impressionable so there's this misillusion in NBC Bay Area you know you're grabbing at straws and in this Asian man I saw articles your your two ago came forward and he's like it's my turtleneck well okay you were chosen to make them but you weren't the reason. You weren't there when the decision was made. You weren't there in the conversation. You weren't there. He was like, you're so freaking smart, Dee Dee. And I was like, well, I mean, I've been raised around all these people that have been me trying to shut me up. I certainly wasn't their pigeon. I promise you that. I had already had highest sales in the nation's history of selling the most Girl Scout cookies in the nation when I was in, I think, fourth or fifth grade. I had already wrote a song that placed second in the state of nation. In the nation. No, in, in Texas. I didn't get national. It was in Texas on the piano. Let me correct that. But I did have highest sales in the other time. It was shortly after I had high sales in the nation for um, steak and ale. I sold the most steaks or food in the nation. It's all about how you present yourself. And that's what I taught Steve from my grandfather teaching me was how to present yourself. And the world just went nuts on how is it that Steve is so different than everybody else? Well, you know what? When you put two adopted kids together that are mature and are attracted to each other, goo gaga in love with each other, and they're in their own world because they finally bonded, you leave, you leave impressions, you leave values, you leave principles, you leave stories that if. So, um, I just wanted to hit on that because it's a total bunch of blood. It had nothing to do with going to that factory. He already had his mind made up. This was about him and how he came my uncle and cousins Bob in the bank. Try to throw some pictures in. Now, see, my screen is froze up. Let me see if I can turn this off. I've got this wonky ass tablet. Too poor to buy another one. <laughs> see, it goes. And then it jumped and it left so fast. Okay.